purport by Srila Prabhupada. Mental speculators who want to understand the limit of the unlimited are certainly nonsensical. Every one of them is captivated by the external potencies of the Lord. The best thing for them is to surrender unto Him, knowing Him to be inconceivable. For thus they can receive His causeless mercy. This prayer was offered by the inhabitants of the higher planetary systems, namely the Jana, Tapas and Satyalokas, who are far more intelligent and powerful than humans. Vishwam Samastam is very significant here. There are the material world and the spiritual world. The sages pray, both worlds are bewildered by your different energies. Those who are in the spiritual world are absorbed in your loving service, forgetting themselves and you also. And those in the material world are absorbed in material sense gratification and therefore also forget you. No one can know you because you are unlimited. It is best not to try to know you by unnecessary mental speculation. Rather, kindly bless us so that we can worship you with costless devotional service. Thus ends the Bhakti Vinant purport. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tushmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Matur Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinami Namaste Saraswate Deve Bhagavani Prasadini Nirvishetan Shunyavadi Sashtakarini Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare So this is another prayer offered by the residents of the higher planets. Janaloka, Tapoloka and Satyaloka. Prabhupada describes them as far more intelligent and powerful than human beings. They are very, very intelligent and they are more powerful, much more powerful than human beings. So they are telling that there is no limit to the wonderful activities of the Supreme Lord. Everything about the Supreme Lord is unlimited. So his activities are also unlimited because he has unlimited forms and through those unlimited forms, each of those forms he reciprocates with unlimited devotees. Just like take the example of Rama. When Rama appeared in this world, he was in Ayodhya as the prince. When he was just born itself, his uh, parents and all the uh, citizens, they were completely overjoyed to actually uh, receive him as the beloved son of King Dasharatha. Then after that he performed the pastime of going with Vishwamitra to subdue the demons who were disturbing Vishwamitra's sacrifice. There he became the beloved of all the saintly persons living in the forest and performing austerities and performing sacrifices. Hmm? Uh, just with the help of, I mean, he and Lakshmana, two brothers, uh, small boys, young boys, they killed 14,000 associates of Ravana, headed by Khara and Dushana. Like this, 
throughout his manifest pastimes, he is performing so many activities in relationship with his devotees. He goes to the forest and there is a whole monkey army with whom he goes to Lanka and then fights a battle against Ravana, Ravana's powerful army. And Ravana is killed and all his army is destroyed by the monkey army. So then he comes back to Ayodhya and rules for 36,000 years. So he is ruling the citizens so nicely that everyone is very, very happy living in the kingdom of Lord Rama. So even today, people talk about Rama Rajya, the rulership of uh, Lord Rama is the best. So, uh, any incarnation or any form in the spiritual world also, Supreme Lord has so many unlimited devotees in each and every form. He, live, uh, he, he relates with so many devotees. And with each devotee, he personally reciprocates. Uh, that is inconceivable for us, how he can reciprocate. Uh, to help us understand, the Bhagavatam describes Krishna when he was in Dwaraka. He had 16,108 queens. So he expanded into those many forms. He expanded into those many forms. Even in the material world, when the Lord is present as Paramatma, His form as Paramatma is... Which is the form as Paramatma? In His personal planet? Shirodak Shai Vishnu. But He expands into the heart of every living being and personally reciprocates with every living being. So, uh, those who are uh, devotees, they are able to perceive this reciprocation. And in that way, the Lord performs unlimited activities in His uh, relationship with His devotees. Relationship means activities. Prabhupada says when the relationship is understood then the relative activities begin. Right now we are forgetful of Krishna and in forgetfulness we don't do devotional service. We are engaged in some material activities. Because our relationship is with this body and this body is part of material nature or maya. Therefore our activities are all material. Because we are acting in relationship with the body. Hmm? People are busy with sense gratification means what? Trying to satisfy the bodily senses, the demands of the senses and the demands of the mind. Demands of the senses uh, we can say are more or less uh, well defined. For the eyes it is just seeing, for the, hand, for the ears it is just hearing, for the tongue it is just tasting. But for the mind, there is no limit to how many ways the mind can speculate, can plan, can conceive. I will enjoy this way, that way, I will do this, I will do that. Like they go for skiing in the uh, uh, snow-capped mountains. Winter sports, they have winter sports. And they have this Olympic Games, Winter Olympic Games, skiing and all these type of things. Uh, they go surfing. You know what is surfing? When the ocean waves are coming, the waves are rising very high in some places. And then 
when the waves rise high and fall down, it forms a kind of foam on top of the surface of the ocean. Uh, so, they go uh, kind of, I don't know how they do that. Uh, they go and carry themselves up on the top of the waves and when the waves fall, they fall down and again go rise on the top along with the wave, something like that. So all these activities are concocted in the mind. So these activities are expanded based on the relationship with the body and the mind. So if with limited body and limited mind, a limited jiva can have so many activities. How many activities are there people are doing in this world? So many activities. So these mayavadis think that after self-realization, no more activity. Why will activities stop after self-realization? If in the conditioned state there are so many activities, then liberated state, it will be many, many, many more activities. Millions and billions and trillions and unlimited activities. Even for a tiny jiva. So what is speaker of the Supreme Lord? His activities are in relationship with his devotees. Or the devotees' activities are in relationship with the Supreme Lord. Unlimited activities. Hmm? Prabhupada travelled round the world in relationship with the Supreme Lord Krishna, as the devotee of Krishna, as the empowered servant of Krishna, he travelled round the world. So many activities of the Krishna consciousness movement. So many activities. Hmm? So, if one tiny jiva can have so many activities, then what to speak of a liberated soul? Liberated soul will have many, many more activities than a conditioned soul. And then the Supreme Lord, who is the Lord of all the jivas, all the liberated souls and all the conditioned souls, He will have so many millions and billions and trillions and unlimited activities. So therefore, the sages are praying, there is no limit to your wonderful activities. Apara karmanaha. Apara karmanaha. His activities are unlimited. So if some of his activities are described in the scriptures, then uh, there is no a limit to how many scriptures can be uh, produced, can be documenting his activities. There is no limit how many scriptures are there. Hmm? That's why Ch Prabhupada says in Chaitanya Charita Amrita in one purport that uh, Ramayana in this planet of earth, how many verses are there? 24 thousand verses. Twenty-four thousand verses. More than the Bhagavata. Bhagavatam is eighteen thousand. Hmm? But in the Brahma Loka, this uh, Ramayana is uh, written or uh, narrated by Valmiki. He has compiled the, composed the Ramayana, the Sanskrit poem. Hmm? Poetry, epic poem. Valmiki was instructed by Narada in brief about the personality of Rama and his wonderful activities. Hmm? Narada heard from whom? About Rama? Brahma, from Brahma. Brahma described to Narada in how many verses? Shatakoti, one billion verses. How many? One billion verses. One hundred crore verses. That is the size of the Ramayana in the Brahma Loka. Even that, Brahma says, 
This is not the complete description of Rama's activities. Unlimited activities of Lord Rama. So, therefore, the sages are telling here, there is no limit to your wonderful activities. Anyone who desires to know the limit of your activities is certainly nonsensical. Brashta matihi tava eshate yak karmanam param. Those who try to understand the Lord's activities as limited. Whose activities are limited in this world? The conditioned soul's activities are limited. Just like they say, uh, so and so person, he did wonderful uh, seva. Then they will put, if they put one statue, they will put one date, one year. He was born in 1914 and he died in 1985, something like that they will put. So, his activities they limit to some number of years, whatever he could do. Anyway, as a child, he will do all nonsensical things only, stupid things. Only when he grows up, he'll become little intelligent and start doing something meaningful. And even those meaningful activities in the beginning years, trying to uh, uh, get some education, trying to uh, get some experience, trying to understand something about this world. And later on, he may do something meaningful. Correct? So, those activities are always limited. Such activities are always limited. Whereas, the activities of the Supreme Lord, there is no limit. Because neither the Supreme Lord is taking birth like a conditioned soul, nor is he dying like a conditioned soul. So, if he is not born and he doesn't die, then he is eternally acting, eternally active. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains, in this, even in this material world, the Lord's activities are eternal. How is that? He is appearing in one universe at this moment, and then the next moment he is appearing in another universe. If he is performing one particular leela in one universe at this time, next moment he is in another universe performing another leela. I mean, the same leela in another universe, next moment. So continuously his activities are going on in unlimited universes, even in the material world. And spiritual world, of course, is always active. Nitya Leela Anurakto. He is always eternally engaged with his devotees in various pastimes in the spiritual worlds. Unlimited Vaikuntha planets. Each Vaikuntha planet having unlimited devotees. And in each of those Vaikuntha planets, the predominating deity is the Supreme Lord Himself as Narayana, as Vasudeva, Sankarshana, Pradyumna, Aniruddha, so many forms. Huh? He is present. So, He is engaged in unlimited activities with His unlimited devotees, eternally, in the spiritual world. Again, in the material world also, in all the universes He is engaged in pastimes activities. Huh? So therefore, it is not possible for anybody to know uh, how many activities that the Lord perform. Nobody can know. Something we may know little about His unlimited activities as they are described by the pure devotees, the liberated souls who are completely dedicated to his service, when they describe something we can know factually about the Lord's activities. Or the Lord himself reveals, just like he appeared as Matsya, Avatara, then he described some of his activities to one Satyavrata Muni. Satyavrata Muni. 
he described some of his activities in bhagavad gita krishna is describing to arjuna some of his activities imam vivasvate yogam proktavan aham abhyayam i spoke this bhagavad gita millions of years back to the sun god now i am speaking the same signs of yoga to you sayevayam maya tedya yoga prokta puratan so like this uh, either the lord himself has to describe his activities or his pure devotees they describe shukare goswami describes krishna's activities uh, suta goswami describes krishna's activities uh, narad muni describes krishna's activities to vyasadeva vyasadeva describes krishna's activities to shukadeva goswami like that the pure devotees they can describe they can describe so uh, we have to hear from such pure devotees and we can know to some extent because we are limited that's why what we can know is also limited but that doesn't mean the lord's activities are limited the cat has become a part of our devotee family it's like devotees can go everywhere the cat is also boldly going everywhere i think somebody has to train this cat where not to go where to go because he has become part of our family he cannot be chased away <coughs> then the sages are telling everyone in this world is conditioned by the powerful mystic potencies see in this world the uh, mystic power of the lord as mahamaya is working so everyone is bewildered by this mahamaya and in this bewildered state they are doing so many activities hmm? they are doing so many activities in this and uh, this bewildered state but those activities are not giving them the real happiness and the real satisfaction they are seeking hmm? so therefore the sages are praying to the lord please bestow your causeless mercy upon these conditioned souls upon these conditioned souls please bestow your causeless mercy the lord actually is very very merciful merciful upon the conditioned souls but still even though he has made so many arrangements to bestow his mercy still people do not accept his mercy they remain ignorant they remain in a bewildered state of existence and they wrongly think the descriptions of the supreme lord to be those of another conditioned soul they are misled by these mayavadis who say that oh krishna incarnation means the impersonal brahman is taking birth in a material form so like this so many uh uh miss uh, people are there to mislead the common people hmm? so many speculations they write about god they speak so many speculations about god so many speculators are so these speculators are misleading common people they themselves are misled and they mislead the common people also uh, so unless the lord bestows his causeless mercy causeless mercy means no cause not that their people are deserving no not that people want and therefore the lord has to respond no they do not know they do not want or they do not understand or they are bewildered or they are speculating they are thinking something else about god so such people have to receive the causeless mercy of the lord by the lord's own arrangement so what is the lord's own arrangement he personally comes he personally comes 
in so many different incarnations. Unlimited incarnations. How many incarnations? As many as there are waves in the ocean. Those many incarnations. So continuously the Lord is incarnating. Continuously is incarnating. Hmm? And he is also sending his uh, confidential devotees. They also come to this world to actually bestow the Lord's causeless mercy upon the conditioned souls. Like Prabhupada. He is bestowing the Lord's mercy upon the conditioned souls. Hmm? So, uh, the uh, sages are praying, kindly bestow your causeless mercy upon these conditioned souls. Now, the devotees' prayers are very powerful. I mean, just like Advaita Acharya prayed to Krishna, you have to incarnate, you have to come down to this world and save the fallen souls. Because he saw the condition when he was preaching, he saw the condition of the people was terrible. In one place it is described that Advaita Acharya saw these rich people. You know, they want to show off how wealthy they are. So what do they do? They hold some social function and they invite a lot of people. Hmm? When I was in college, we had one uh, uh, college ground. Big ground. Very, very big ground. Yeah. So, in that big ground, one corner they will play football, another corner they will have cricket, another corner they will have volleyball, tennis and all, very small. So, so many games can be played. And that ground also was given for some social functions. So, you can understand some function is there where, you know, the whole city practically will gather some big functions. Uh, those days, there used to be some uh, Ram Leela, uh, they used to have uh, Ram Leela uh, activities, what is that? Drama. Uh, so people used to gather in huge numbers. So once I heard one politician, his daughter's wedding he is conducting in that ground. I said, why would somebody conduct wedding in that ground? No, he has invited the whole city to come for the daughter's wedding. He has so much money. You see? Huh? So, these wealthy people, they want to show off their wealth. This is what they do. They will hold something in a big ground, invite all the people come. So, during Advaita Acharya's time, it is described, uh, wealthy people who wanted to show off their wealth, they would spend so much money, especially during their daughter or son's wedding. So what about people who don't have children? How do they spend and show off their wealth? One rich man, he didn't have any children. And in discussion with another rich man who did not have children, both of them decided to get their dogs married. And then that dog's marriage, it's not a private affair, dog's marriage. It's a public affair. He's inviting the whole town people or whatever, city people. Please come. He's giving invitation. Just like people give, no? Daughter's marriage, son's marriage. Please come. So both are going and inviting people. Please come for this function, our dog is getting married. Pet dog. So Advaita Acharya saw this and said, what nonsense these people are doing? What has the society come to? So, he became very, very compassionate upon the people. He thought that if he were to actually go and try to preach, it would not be possible. Then, if people will accept his preaching, okay. If people don't accept, he thought, I'll become angry and finish off all these nonsensical guys. But then he took compassion. What is the use? Anyway, they are already dead. What is the use of killing people who are already dead? Eh? It's like no use beating a dead horse. Hmm? Like a horse is living, 
then if it is lazy if it doesn't uh, do the work you can try to you know beat it somehow and coax it to uh, actually do some work or start running but a dead horse what is the use how much ever you beat it's not going to get up it's useless similarly people who are already dead because they become completely nonsense nonsensical activities so advaita acharya thought personally krishna has to come to deliver these fallen souls nobody else can deliver them so he began to worship krishna by offering tulsi leaf and uh, leaves and uh, ganga jala tulsi dala matrena jalasya chulakena va vikrinite swamatmanam bhaktebhyo bhaktavatsalaha uh, one verse in the scripture says that krishna is very 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 merciful to the devotees uh, he considers if his devotee offers him uh, worship by offering one tulsi leaf and a palm full of ganga jala while worshiping saligram shila particularly krishna's incarnation as saligram shila is the most merciful incarnation of the deity of krishna why because uh, deity form is generally carved out in stone or metal or whatever then that deity form has to be installed deity form has to be installed according to agama according to the procedure laid out in the scriptures but this saligram shila is krishna appearing in deity form in the stone who is self manifest no need to install the saligram shila the lord is present if it is narsimha saligrama narsimha is present in that form of saligram shila narsimha saligram shila if it is narayana shila narayana is present in that narayana shila form so simply you bring that saligram shila keep it in your altar and you worship no need for installation self manifest uh, deity form of the supreme lord from the spiritual world so that saligram shila and how to worship the saligram shila the simplest worship is for saligram shila among all the deity forms simplest worship why no need for installation any other deity form has to be installed and no need for installation and how to worship just one tulsi leaf and a palm full of ganga jala and somebody will say oh getting ganga jala is so difficult no if you don't live on the bank of the ganges what do we do you can invoke ganges simply by chanting the name of ganga that's what our pujari does every day गंगे चयुमने चैव गोदावरी सरस्वती नर्मदे सिंधु कावेरी जलेस्मिन सन्निधि कुरु मे ऑल दीस रिवर वाटर्स बी प्रेजेंट इन माय आचमन कप इन माय पॉट व्हिच आई एम गोइंग टू यूज फॉर बेदिंग द लॉर्ड सिंपली बाय चैंटिंग द नेम्स ऑफ द रिवर्स वी कैन इनवोक चैंटिंग नेम ऑफ गंगा आई कैन इनवोक गंगा सो दैट पाम फुल ऑफ गंगा जल and one tulsi leaf if you offer to saligram shila the lord is fully satisfied fully satisfied and this how easy it is to worship the lord in contrast to this the worship of the demigods according to scriptural injunction somebody does so many rules and regulations are there so many restrictions are there krishna there is no restriction no formal rules no regulations no need for installation demigod you have to install the deity you have to install the deity of the demigod no demigod can be self manifest no not possible whereas krishna self manifest as saligram shila 
even as dt some temples you go in our uh, hyderabad temple swayambhu lakshmi narsimha swayambhu means the lord himself has appeared in the form of that dt in the form of the stone dt he is himself appeared he gives darshan to some devotee some sage he will sit and do tapasya near mysore there is a place called uh, i forget the name of the place uh, there there is one shrinivasa dt on top of a hill the pujari says this dt appeared because one agastya rishi he performed tapasya and prayed to the lord kindly give me darshan so the lord appeared in what form in the dt form and agastya muni did uh, worship and he handed over that dt to some body else and like that in parampara it is coming down in that family of that pujari you know his descendant he is a descendant of agastya rishi hmm? so in that family that worship is coming down that dt is self manifest dt nobody has carved nobody has installed no it is self manifest like that there are self manifest dts even in the form of you know narsimha dt itself what to speak of saligram shila if you go to nepal in one place this gandaki river is flowing in the gandaki river you find this saligram shila scientists say this uh, people who study this water bodies and all that there are some aquatics which this round stone they carve out they carve out some shapes that's what the scientists say hmm? this uh, markings on the saligram shila there is a whole scripture which says which mark refers to which form of the lord manifest as that saligram shila so some mark is there it they will say it is narayana shila some other mark is there they will say narsimha shila some other mark is there they will say uh, krishna shila like that different markings different um, dts but that's not what the scientists say the materialists they will say different uh, aquatics they are able to carve out this uh, different uh, markings on the smooth stone inside that river because there is a stones without any markings also in the river so the theory of these uh, materialistic persons who study do research how these markings are coming they say some of the stones those aquatics are uh, you know biting and they are creating those impressions but according to our scriptures that is not the actual fact there is not the actual fact the fact is the lord has manifested in that form in order to enable the deity, devotees to worship so uh, advaita acharya he began to worship the saligram shila praying to krishna what did he pray you personally had to come to save the fallen souls so my point is the devotee's prayer is very very powerful the lord came one of the reasons for chaitanya's appearance is the calling of advaita acharya his pure devotee called him so he came similarly the sages are praying to lord varaha kindly deliver these conditions all other they have no hope they'll remain in this material world perpetually engaged entangled in sense gratification engaged in so many sinful activities misled by so many uh, other speculators uh, who claim that they are great authorities on uh, vedas and give all wrong interpretation of the vedas speculated understanding of the vedas they write volumes of books so many books are written about maya or the philosophy uh, so people are misled when they read all these books and they wrongly think that uh, when the lord incarnates it is actually uh, a material form material form of god god is no material form god never assumes any material form his activities are not material 
His senses are not material. His form is not material. But these uh, people are misled to think like that. Hmm? So, such people, the only hope is that the Lord himself comes to deliver them or the Lord senses representatives, the pure devotees who exclusively come for preaching Krishna consciousness to deliver the conditioned souls. So, their prayers are definitely effective. When they pray, the Lord actually uh, is very pleased to satisfy his pure devotees, especially when it comes to uh, delivering the conditioned souls. Uh, because that is very dear to Krishna. What is the most dear activity, dear most activity of the Lord? Krishna declares in the Bhagavad Gita, who is very, 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 very dear to him. Nachatasman manushyeshu kashin me priyakrittamaha. Priyakrittamaha. Most dear. Who is that? One who is preaching this message of Bhagavad Gita. One who is preaching this message of Bhagavad Gita. Hmm? So similarly, one who is... Uh, uh, praying to the Lord that you kindly appear or arrange to deliver the conditioned souls. They are the dear most servitors of the Lord. They are glorified in the Bhagavatam. The gopis also glorify uh, such devotees. Bhuvi grinantiye bhuri da janaha tava kathamritam tapta jivanam Kavibiriditam, Kalmashapaham, Shravanamangalam, Srimadatatam, Bhuvigrinantiye, Bhurida Janaha. Gopis are telling your descriptions of your uh, uh, pastimes and activities and qualities, etc., are actually nectarian. Uh, uh, descriptions are very nectarian, nectarian to hear. And they are being broadcast by your devotees who are very, very liberal-minded. Bhurida Janaha. They are liberal-minded. They don't mind coming to this material world to preach your glories. They undertake any amount of austerity to live in this world amidst non-devotees. For a devotee to live amidst non-devotees is a big austerity. But they don't mind. They are willing to undergo any amount of hardship. Just to broadcast your glories among the non-devotees. The Prabhupada went to America. And amidst those hippies. Initially he was staying amidst the hippies. Later on when one of the hippies, some of the hippies became devotees. Then he was staying amidst devotees. In the beginning he was not staying amidst devotees. He was staying amidst the hippies. Who were non-devotees in the beginning. So he preached to them out of compassion for them. And then they became, some of them became devotees. Then he uh, engaged them in preaching to more non-devotees. And he spread the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world to preach to non-devotees. So essentially the preaching actually is meant for the non-devotees. Meant for devotees to preach to non-devotees. That is what essentially the preaching is meant for. Recently I was in US in Tompkins Square Park. So one devotee, he was carrying this guitar for uh, the uh, uh, Sankirtan in that uh, Tompkins Square Park. Because he told, I asked him, why are you taking the guitar? So he said, in this Tompkins Square Park type places, there will be some uh, guys with guitar, you know, playing some useless song, some, some karmi song. And uh, just trying to, uh, you know, uh, spend some time like that, attract some people. So he said, I'll play guitar and call them to join me in, uh, for our singing Hare Krishna, they'll play the guitar. And that's what happened. He started playing guitar, there was another fellow sitting near that... Uh, uh, tree where Prabhupada under which underneath which Prabhupada performed Sankirtan first time and started the Hare Krishna movement. So near that there was one fellow sitting, one hippie type of person sitting 
with a guitar and playing something. So he called, please come, please come. And then uh, that fellow came and then our devotee was playing uh, Hare Krishna one tune. He started playing also. Then our devotee stopped playing. He continued playing. Well, I was leading and then some other devotee was leading and he was playing. So this way, non-devotee is also engaged in Sankirtan. Non-devotee is also doing some seva. You see? So it is essential that we preach to non-devotees. We preach to non-devotees. And preaching to non-devotees is austerity also because non-devotees generally not interested in Krishna consciousness. Not interested in Krishna consciousness. And sometimes they are very angry if you try to preach to them. They become violent. They say, Jagayan Madai. When Natyananda Prabhu tried to uh, give them the holy name, they became violent. They abused Nityananda Prabhu. One of them threw a, a piece of a broken earthen pot and hurt Nityananda. So all these uh, type of uh, uh, risks are there. But in spite of the risks, the pure devotee's compassion is that they want to deliver the suffering souls uh, from this world. And that is the greatest service to the Supreme Lord. Among all the types of service that one can render to the Lord, the greatest service is delivering the non-devotees by preaching to them, by reaching out to them, by giving them, distributing them the Lord's mercy. So I'll stop here. Nutra Srimad Bhagavatam ki jaya shla Prabhupada ki jaya.